Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Today we're going to be talking about I Dream of Genie. I'm so excited to bring this video to you because I'm a big fan of the show and I haven't done a video in a while so I did want to touch upon one really cool and interesting fact and that is Barbara Eden herself who of course played Genie on the show. She had her husband, believe it or not, one of her husbands because she was married several times, Michael and Sarah on the show. Now it wasn't on the show just once but actually a total of three times i'll tell you about the times that he appeared the episodes that they were about and why he is such an awesome character well he plays awesome characters in all three episodes as well as his overall talent so let's get right to it guys and gals now michael and sara was born in a small village in syria in 1922. Now he came to this country with his family, the United States, when he was about two years old. He lived in Massachusetts until they moved to California about 10 years later. Now he was married, as I mentioned, to I Dream of Genie actress Barbara Eden from 1958 through 1974. Now both of them were married three times, that is Barbara Eden was married three times as well as Michael was married three times, and one of those marriages to each other so that's pretty cool and of course during the time that they were married together that's when he appeared on I Dream of Genie of course that makes sense now together they did have only one son and his name was Matthew unfortunately he died of an overdose in 2001 it was a very difficult moment for both parents now because of his ethnicity Michael was able to play many different parts and he was pretty popular in the Hollywood scene because of the way that he looked, the way that he could speak. He had a very commanding voice, one that I absolutely loved to hear. He appeared in many episodes of Star Trek as Cleongs, which is very, very cool. He played a lot of quote unquote Indian characters, Indian roles. He played uh, Apache. He was in Gunsmoke. I can go on and on, even playing an Egyptian taskmaster in the 1956 movie, The Ten Commandments. Now, the episodes that he appeared in are Happy Anniversary from 1966. He played the Blue Jinn. Now, in my opinion, this is the best of the three episodes. I have to admit, I saw two out of the three. I only thought he appeared in two episodes of I Dream of Genie. But then I did more homework, more research, and I found out that it was actually three. So I'll mention them all to you here. Now, the Battle of Waikiki is the second one, 1968 episode where he played King Kamehameha and that was one that I at first didn't really like but then as the episode continued it actually got really funny and he did a good job playing the part and it was overall a well-written episode pretty silly pretty funny but entertaining nonetheless and finally my sister the home wrecker he plays an astronaut just like everyone else in the 1969 episode he plays Major Biff Jellico. I want to talk just briefly a little bit about each of the episodes and tell you why I think they were pretty good and interesting. Starting with Happy Anniversary, which I mentioned out of three is my favorite. He plays the villain, of course, in this episode, the Blue Jinn, and he's pretty powerful. He's the one that even has more powers than Genie herself. He plays, as I mentioned, the villain, the antagonist. He's one with some silly scenes. He's painted all blue, which is kind of cool. And I actually will mention this because in the other two episodes, he is not completely blue. But there's one other time in the 1990s where he did play a character from Batman. Another villain, Mr. Freeze. If you are a fan of the 1960s Batman, you will know Mr. Freeze, played by three different actors, the villain in the 1960s Adam West Batman, and he did so well as the voice of Mr. Freeze. Many regard him as the best portrayal of Mr. Freeze there is out there. I know it's a cartoon, maybe a lot of people aren't into cartoons, but if you seriously watch the episodes that he's in, it's so impactful, so dramatic. You take his character so seriously, and it's so effective. He has that commanding voice that I wanna have you listen to. Rest well, my love. The monster who took you from me will soon learn. I mean, don't you just agree with me? He is completely amazing. And yes, he shares his voice in I Dream of Genie. It's a good episode, happy anniversary. I won't spoil it for you, but it is a great one. Absolutely love it. He is pretty much uh, tricked by Genie and Major Nelson. And I think it's a fantastic episode. Now, in the battle for Waikiki, this is one that I never really saw before. And it's pretty funny because he plays 
King Kamehameha, uh, of course, the Hawaiian king, and what was very interesting about it was that he was brought from the past into the present, that is the present of I Dream of Genie. And he's surprised by all the technology and all the future advances that he sees. And he's kind of upset and he's with the gang and the gang is trying to kind of control him. He's very upset at what Hawaii has become. And so the whole episode is kind of his journey into discovering the future and at the end being kind of consoled that he is loved by his people, he is loved as an individual. It's a very human story and I actually really, really, really like it as well. I don't like it as much as the Blue Jin story. It takes a little bit to get on point for you to understand what they're trying to do, but I think it's an episode, if you haven't seen it, to really watch it. Let me know what you think down below of these episodes, which one you like before I move on to the next one. The next one is My Sister the Homewrecker. Of course, you see Barbadian playing the double role. Of course, the antagonist and the protagonist does a very good job just differentiating the characters. And we see him playing a bit of a part, Major Biff Jellico. He is basically the main guy here at this point. We have the Major and Jeannie married. And as I mentioned, I didn't see the episode myself, but I heard it's a fairly good one. It's probably not the best because the show is kind of coming to the end. A lot of people told me that they actually don't like the episodes where Major Nelson and Jeannie are married for many different reasons. I'll have to check it out myself. I literally found out he was in this episode as I was editing it, so I couldn't leave it out. I wanted to make sure to be as accurate as possible. But I hope that you enjoy this. I hope that you enjoyed a look at Michael and Sarah on I Dream of Jeannie. And it's really cool to think that Barbara Eden was able to have her husband on the show. She had big pull. Of course, she was the star of the, show, of the show, so why not bring her husband in and give her a few acting parts? Let me know what you think down below of Michael and his portrayal, as well as acting along Barbara Eden. He did a really good job, in my opinion. We'll see you next time, and don't forget, be hopeful. Thank you so much to my Diamond Tier patrons, Citizen Kane 359, Paul T, Ricky, Gary N, David D, Sally N, Yasmin G, and Lori K. If you want to be part of the Patreon family, don't forget to take a look at the description with many exclusives that you can enjoy.